Good morning, everybody. We have Monday Night Football tonight, NFL Week 12, Bears versus Vikings. And I have three player props for you guys to lock in. Now, I didn't have any plays yesterday. Appreciate you guys bearing with me there. But unfortunately, the last time I did have plays was Thanksgiving, which was not our best day. I had uh, five plays total, only got one of those five to cash. We ended the day on Thanksgiving down 1.6 units. Luckily, these pumped up NFL player props have been incredible since I started doing this. So we still have a ton of profit on the season to date. We are up 22.2 units since I started doing this in week seven with an ROI of 18 point, uh, about 18%, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So as for today, as I mentioned, I have three player props for you guys to lock in and let's get into it. And play number one, we are taking Josh Dobbs, anytime touchdown plus 190 odds at FanDuel. Now, I tweeted this out last night that I liked it at plus 220. Obviously, the odds have shifted down a little bit to plus 190, but I still like it at that number. It's at both uh, FanDuel and DraftKings, and I still like it at that number, so we're still locking it in. Now, the, the Bears defense, if you look at just their, their total stats, they're not that great, but that's mostly against the pass. They've slowly made incredible strides against the run. In terms of advanced analytics, in DVOA, they have the 25th ranked defense in the entire NFL. So the seventh worst defense. But if you drill that down into a little bit more detail, they're 27th against the pass, the pass, so fifth worst, and they're 11th against the run. So they're pretty good against the run and they're awful against the pass. Because of that, teams just don't bother running on them anymore because they can have a lot of success through the air. And that bears out when you just look at raw stats. So the Bears give up the second fewest rushing yards per game. They also have the fourth fewest rushing attempts against in general. Again, that's because they're so bad against the pass. They're below average in every metric on the pass. Yards allowed, yards per attempt, just total attempts, yards per completion, all that stuff. They're bad. So the guess here is that the Vikings offense, they're not going to call a lot of designed runs. I'm guessing they're going to have Josh Dobbs drop back to pass. Now, he is not a typical just drop back and in the pocket sling it type of quarterback. He's going to run. And not only that, but the Vikings have a pretty bad rushing offense in general. They're one of the least efficient rushing offenses in the NFL. So all this is to say that the Vikings are going to pass a ton, as I've been saying. That also means a lot of opportunities for Dobbs to scramble, especially when they get into the red zone. Dobbs has a rushing touchdown in five straight games, including all three as a member of the Vikings, which makes sense. You're a new quarterback. You're in the red zone. Space is tight. Your, your instinct is to run. And that's what I think is going to happen in this one. I also like Dobbs rushing attempts and rushing yards over as well. We're just going to track the anytime touchdown, but I'm going to lock those in personally. Just nothing that I'm going to track officially. That's play number one. Next up, obviously in the same game here, this is my only non plus money banger. Alexander Madison under 45 and a half rushing yards, minus 115 odds at bet MGM. Now, have I mentioned how good the Bears defense is against the run and how bad they are against the pass? Yes, I did. I gave out all the stats in the previous segment talking about Josh Dobbs. But with that same logic, I absolutely love fading Alexander Madison and his rushing yards in this game. I think it is a smash play. Madison taking over for Dalvin Cook has not been good or efficient all year. He, he's been terrible. In the 11 games that he has played, he has only gone over this total in three of those 11 games. Now, one of those three was last game against the Broncos. That makes me like this under even more because we're able to fade recent results. He's Alexander Madison, he's even missed this uh, rushing yardage total. He's missed 46 or more yards in games where he's had 18, 16, 16 rushing attempts. That type of efficiency is terrible. So even if he gets volume in this game, which I'm not projecting, I still think he has a a very big, very good chance to go under 45 and a half rushing yards. Overall, when you look at his season, he's only averaging 3.6 yards per carry. That's putrid. And these two teams played earlier in the year. Madison went under this total. He went under this total in the game in which he had 18 carries. So that was the most carries he's had in a game. And he still went under 45 and a half rushing yards. Again, I love fading him in this matchup. As I mentioned earlier, the Bears are 11th against the run. They allow the second fewest yards, uh, just rushing yards per game and the second lowest yards per carry as well. Tons of reasons why it's unlikely Alexander Madison has a good game. So we love fading him in this one as our second play. Next up, 
third and final pick of the evening, DJ Moore, 80 plus receiving yards, plus 178 odds at FanDuel. So my last play of the evening, obviously I had to go with the pumped up play, another plus money banger, this time backing DJ Moore. Basically, the logic here is in games that Justin Fields plays, it's worth it to pack DJ Moore. Granted, it's been a small sample size on the year, and it's also only been one game in which Justin Fields has returned. But in that game, DJ Moore had 96 receiving yards on seven receptions and nine targets. That's against a pretty good Lions defense, right? He still had a very good game. Now, it was a really gross start to the year, mostly in week one, but DJ Moore really started to come on with Justin Fields as his quarterback. Then, of course, Fields got hurt. And then in the one game Fields has returned, he has been very good again. So Justin Fields has played seven games so far this year, including the game in which he got injured. He's played seven games. DJ Moore has cleared 80 plus receiving yards in four of those seven games. Now, you can take out week one because he only had two targets, and that was clearly the anomaly. He's had six or more targets in every single game that Fields has played. He only had two in week one. So if you want to take out that game, he's cleared it in four of six games that Justin Fields has started. If you want to include games in which Justin Fields started and finished because he missed it in the week Justin Fields got hurt, DJ Moore has hit this in four of five games that Justin Fields has played. So a lot of reasons to back DJ Moore. As I mentioned, he's had six plus targets in every single game that Fields has played. And he more often has more than six. He more often has between eight and 10 targets. Last week, he had nine. Admittedly, the Vikings defense has been better as the year has gone on than they were at the beginning of the year. But I still think that DJ Moore is going to be able to find success on nine plus targets. I also like his receptions going above uh, six plus, taking him six plus. We're only going to track the yards, but I do like the receptions as well. And that's all we got. Three plays for you guys to lock in for Monday night football tonight. If we can get two of these three to cash, we will guarantee to be profitable. If we get all three, that would be great. So let's root for that. Other than that, remember to like the video, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff helps me out a ton. Thanks for watching and have a good one.